On 12th March, eight days after the day of poisoning, I was summoned by Foreign Secretary Johnson, who put forward 24-hour ultimatum to explain the Russian government's position by the end of the next day. The question was put like that, the following. Either the incident in Salisbury was a direct act of the Russian government against the UK, or the Russian government had lost control over nerve agent that the foreign secretary identified as A234 and allowed it to get into the hands of the others. Next hour, Prime Minister May updated the House of Commons about the incident in Salisbury using the same words as Secretary Johnson did at our meeting, except that she introduced the term Novichok, a bizarre Russian name to use with regards to the chemical substance in a clear attempt to additionally and quite artificially link the incident to Russia. Next day, on the 13th of March, the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs gave a statement on the accident, on the incident in Salisbury, and strongly protested against evidence-free accusations and provocations by the British authorities. It was emphasized that Russia is not to be talked to in ultimatums, and that in any case we can only properly consider the matter after we receive samples of the chemical substance to which UK is referring to and after the UK complies with the Chemical Weapons Convention that stipulates cooperation between state parties for which Moscow is ready. Without that, there is no sense in the British statements. On 14th March, the Prime Minister gave another statement on the incident in Salisbury in the House of Commons where she announced an expulsion of Russian diplomats and other hostile and provocative measures against Russia. She provided no proof of Russia's alleged involvement in the incident and made a conclusion that, as she put it, it was highly likely that Russia was responsible for it. Thus, the British government, again, built an official position, and I want to stress it, official position on pure assumptions. The embassy again requested the British authorities to cooperate under the Chemical Weapon Convention on bilateral basis or through the OPCW Executive Council and share information and the samples of the toxic substance. Due to the pressure of the Russian side, the Prime Minister at last sent a letter to the Director General of the OPCW Technical Secretariat on the 14th of March and requested assistance in verifying British analysis. As I understand, the OPCW experts uh, arrived to the UK this Monday. We don't know their mandate, but I hope they will follow all the necessary procedures and principles of the CWC, Chemical Weapon Convention, including ensuring a proper chain of custody of the samples, if there are any. They would also need to check how that was possible that the British authorities managed to designate the nerve agent used as so-called Novichok as its origin so quickly. Could it mean that it's highly likely that the British authorities already had this nerve agent in their chemical laboratory in Port Down, which is the largest secret military facility in the UK that has been dealing with the chemical weapons? Is it a coincidence that this chemical weapons facility is only eight miles away from the site of the incident? How did doctors decide what antidotes 
to administer to the victims. Russian experts are puzzled how quickly the British authorities managed to designate the nerve agent allegedly used in Salisbury and how this correlates with Scotland Yard's official statements that, and I'm quoting, investigation is highly likely to take weeks or even months to arrive at conclusions. We are sure that the results of the Technical Secretariat Assistant Mission should be reported to the OPCW Executive Council. A few words about lack of cooperation from the British side. Instead of imposing 24-hour deadline, the UK could and should have referred to paragraph 2 of Article 9 of the Chemical Weapon Convention, which requires the state parties to make every effort to clarify and resolve through exchange of information and consultations any matter which they cause doubt about compliance with the Convention. A state party which receives a request from another state party shall provide as soon as possible but in any case not later than 10 days after the request, information sufficient to answer the doubt or concern. If they requested information from Russia on the 12th of March, they would have received it by 22nd March, that means today. The British side didn't send a request to Russia and is not willing to talk to the Russian representatives in Hague where the OPCW Technical Secretariat is located. Instead, an anti-Russian campaign has been launched in the UK. To make the story short, Britain has, without any evidence, blamed Russia of poisoning of three people and continues to refuse to cooperate. We cannot accept that. There is another case which worries us very much. From the British media, and again, not from the British authorities, we have learned about the death of the Russian citizen Nikolai Glushkov. The embassy has also learned from the press that the police investigating Mr. Glushkov's death assumes that he could have died from compression of the neck, I'm quoting, suggesting he was strangled. In the full compliance with the 1963 Convention on Consular Relations, the embassy immediately requested, by note verbal, full information of the, on the circumstances of the death of the Russian national and on the investigation, but has not received any meaningful response from the Foreign Office so far. Moreover, it seems that the British side is deliberately ignoring our requests and continues to avoid any contact with the embassy on that matter. To summarize what I have said before the Q&A session, I would like to say that the burden of proof lies within the British authorities. By now, no facts have been officially presented either to the OPCW or to us or to the UK partners or to the public. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot take British words for granted. The UK had a record, bad record, of violating international law and misleading the international community, which include invading Yugoslavia, 78 days of bombing, Iraq and Libya under the false pretext, and supporting the coup d'etat in Ukraine. At the end, I would like to quote President Ronald Reagan, who frequently referred to the Russian proverb, trust but verify. History shows that Britain's statements must be verified. We demand full transparency of the investigation and full cooperation with Russia and the 
OPCW. So this is the end of my remarks, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.